What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today it is a Cosplay Chris Creates episode. This is a project that is very near and dear to my heart and something that has been in the pipeline for quite some time. It's finally happening and I figured I'd make a video on the entire process. So today, what you see right here is a life cast of Robert Englund, AKA the man who played Freddy Krueger. The origins of this life cast, not this particular casting, but the mold it came from originally date back to 1988, which is actually the year I was born and the year that Elm Street 4 was released and was in production. So this came from the mold of the life cast they did of Robert to sculpt the Freddy makeup on for part four. The casting had seen some definite wear and tear and just had been knocked about quite a bit from you know being put in storage and then being brought back out to the workshop and just being knocked around. So I've gone ahead, cleaned it up, cleaned up any cracks and whatnot and have permanently fixed it down uh, to this styrofoam base. And today's video is all about taking a silica mold of it. We're then gonna not only create resin castings but we're also gonna create what's called a clay pour or a clay casting. Clay casting is the process Process that involves melting down clay. In this case, we're going to be using soft Monster Makers clay. We just melt it down on a stove top, pour it in the mold, slush it around, much like you would a resin slush casting with a part A, part B mix ratio. But in this case, it's just a matter of melting down some clay. Throw it around in the mold until it sets. We're then going to back it up with some expander foam, pull it out of the mold, and bang, we have exactly what you see here but in clay form. Then after that, and that'll be a completely separate video, I'm gonna have some very special friends sculpt in the open eyes. And if you're wondering why I'm not gonna be doing that stage myself, sculpting eyes is not my strong point at the moment. I love sculpting, and this is why I'm doing this project because I've got that yearning to sculpt again. But just giving the final look that I want, I feel having someone who's an expert at sculpting open eyes, especially Robert's eyes, he has some very unique looking eyes, especially the bags on the sides of his eyes. I just feel it's gonna be a lot easier and just make the final piece uh, stand out more and give it a lot more depth, character and soul. So the first step before any of the clay pouring, casting, all that jazz is we have to take a silicon mold and we're going to be creating what's called a silicon glove mold over the entire piece. Now the silicon we are going to be using today is Pinky Sill from Barnes. Um, I've been using this stuff the better half of 15 years now since I was in high school. It's easy to use. Mix ratio is one to one. We're gonna build up several layers, probably head to the better part of eight layers. We also have some thickener, so we can thicken up that silicon and put it on vertical surfaces, because I will have to go in and fill the ears, the nose, some parts of the eye sockets, just to make sure that there are gonna be no undercuts for the next step. Segway, the next step is then, after we have done our silicon layers, we're gonna create a two-piece fiberglass, mother, shell, case mold, whatever you wanna call it, something that is gonna hold the shape of the silicon whilst we're making our castings. That will include making a clay dividing wall with some wet clay. Usually I'll be using plaster, plaster bandage, but having the added advantage of fiberglass is that it's light, sturdy, and will last a very long time, and we can drill holes all around the flange and have them bolted in with some wing nuts. So like I mentioned, our piece is clean, prepped, free of grease, grime, dust, all that jazz, ready for some silicon. So with that being said, let's get to it. So like I mentioned, the silicon we are gonna be molding the life cast with is pinky sill. We have part A, part B, mix ratio is 100 to 100. We've got a disposable brush to brush on all the layers. So several of these I got from Bunnings Warehouse, they're like 90 cents each. So once they're used, they are gone straight in the bin. I use barbecue skewers to mix up silicon, resin, stuff like that, because they're just cheap, easy, and of course, disposable. We've got our mixing scales. So at the moment, it's very touch and go, and you literally have to eyeball it. When it comes to figuring out the perfect kind of grammage, for coverage over an entire head. It's best to have a lot more than a lot less because you don't want to be frantically mixing up another batch of silicon whilst the batch that is on the live cast is starting to set and it just gets quite messy. So aim of the game is about eight layers with also thickening up some areas after probably the third or fourth coat, but I will show you guys the exact process of thickening that. But for the time being, let's get the first couple of coats underway.
Okay, now that we're three coats in, it's time to go in with some thickened up silicon and fill in the ears, the nostrils, and any areas that could possibly be undercuts that could inhibit the way that we demold the fiberglass shell mold. So for that, we're using Silfix Silicon Thicker, also from Barnes, and you literally just need a drop or a dollop of this stuff if you're doing a big batch, but in this case, we just need a tiny little drop. And what this stuff is gonna do is make it possible for this stuff to be put on a vertical surface and fill in any crevices. So it is very handy indeed. Then once that's done and we let that coat dry just in those certain areas, we're gonna recommence the standard silicon coverages. So probably about four more coats as well as adding some silicon keys, but I'll explain that step when we get to it. Okay, we're on our third last coat, and what we're gonna do differently this time around when we apply uh, the coat is we're gonna get some silicon keys. Now, I actually cast these um, from a paint palette. You know, it has the six kind of grooves on either side, just poured some silicon in and popped them out. And these are registration keys that are gonna act as uh, kind of grips to grip on to the fiberglass mother mold shell. So we're gonna apply four along here and four along the back, but we're gonna apply them when we've applied the next coat of silicon and we're gonna kind of press them into the silicon, let them adhere, and then do our two final coats over the entire piece as well as the registration keys. Okay, our clay dividing wall is finally done and the trickiest part is really making it all stick because nothing wants to stick to silicon but silicon. So I'm gonna just let this dry just a bit. This is water-based clay after all, so I don't want it to be too wet when we start applying the fiberglass. So probably give it about half an hour just to absorb all the water that's surrounding it. Give it a quick clean with some baby wipes and then we can move on to fiberglassing the front half. Okay, so this is our fiberglassing kit. Now to break everything down, we've got our fiberglass resin and our catalyst hardener. Now, the reason why it's so small is you only need a couple of drops added to usually whatever amount you have in a plastic cup or a container for that matter. Uh, mix it up and it gives you about half an hour to work with. So it's not as fast as say Supercast or Bee Queen, which are casting resins. Uh, this is a slow setting fiberglass resin. So we're actually gonna be using fiberglass sheet. Now this is how it comes pre-packaged. I've gone ahead and cut up little squares that are actually in a box just off camera and sealed up because I don't want any fibers getting airborne. We obviously have our disposable brush. We have nitrile gloves and this is the most important part, a proper respirator geeks and geekettes. I cannot stress this enough. When dealing with fiberglass or hazardous fumes like fiberglass in general, you really need to invest in a good respirator. So the first step is we're gonna mix up our fiberglass resin and do a brush on coat over the first half of the mold and then we're gonna grab our fiberglass matting sheets in the little squares and dab them on bit by bit. So we're gonna be using the dabbing method works best um, until we run out of the sheets that I've pre-cut up for the first half until we build up a nice even layer.
Okay, so a lot has happened since the last time we filmed Geeks and Geekheads. So what you see here is the demolded fiberglass shell. Unfortunately, it did not fully work out the way I intended it to. And that is because I oversealed uh, the dividing wall, which is a thing. You can actually overseal stuff, which means certain things may not cure on uh, the seal of the clear coat or the Vaseline in this case. Uh, the Vaseline inhibited the cure of some parts of the fiberglass where the dividing wall is. So I managed to crack both pieces off. I've salvaged it. We also have the silicon being housed in here for now and it works. But what I also did is I went ahead after demolding the shell whilst the silicon was still on the life cast and got some plaster bandage and went ahead and made a backup shell out of plaster bandage. If all else fails with this, we have a backup and the silicon is perfectly intact after we took it off, everything's hunky-dory. So, so this is just a bit of insurance. If whilst we're doing the clay pour, something does happen to the shell mold here, I can just grab this bad boy and whack the silicon in there. And the you go there is the silicon glove mold right there there actually is a seam line up the back here I did cut the back of uh, Robert's life cast to demold this just to make sure no silicon would rip or it was under tension and it's just gonna make demolding the clay pour a lot easier so of course the next step is we're gonna do a clay pour and for that we're gonna be using Monster Makers clay from the Monster Makers crew, but I got this particular one from Barnes. They stock it in the soft, medium, or hard. I always go for the soft stuff. It just makes life easy, especially when you're sculpting by hand. So what we're gonna do is put a tiny little saucepan that I got from a thrift shop on the hot plate. We're gonna use a medium heat. We don't wanna burn this stuff or rush it to melt it down, because that's when you actually can burn the clay itself, and it will inhibit the way it sets and it looks for the final outcome. So we're gonna chuck some chunks in here little pieces at a time I'm gonna be brushing in the first coat around the shoulders and the neck and then pour in the rest around the head cavity and start to slush it around so the trick with this stuff is that you don't want to slush it around when it's at peak temperature peak boiling point because it's gonna keep melting down the bits of clay that have uh, built up a wall on the inside of the mold is just gonna keep melting it down. So you kinda wanna start slushing it when it's starting to set and it's starting to get a bit more body to it instead of liquid. Then once we've built up a nice consistency, I'm also gonna build up solid areas in the ears and the face. So when time comes to sculpt the open eyes, we've got some decent solid thickness walls around the face area. So once all that's done, we're then gonna get some R Foam 33 and foam fill the rest of the empty cavity. But for the time being, Let's melt some clay. All right, geeks and geekheads, I am very happy with the coverage I've got here in terms of the monster clay. We built up a nice, even bunch of layers within the head, especially at the front, where we've got to sculpt those open eyes, but also around the shoulder area, the neck area, where there needs to be some sculpting and really burrowing in there to get those burn details when I do go to sculpt the Freddy Krueger bust. So, the next and final step is we have to get some R Foam 33, also from Barnes. This is an expanding foam. It is a rigid expanding foam, not a squishy one. And we're gonna foam fill this bad boy. Now the mix ratio for this stuff is 100 to 100, very easy. So I will probably be doing it in batches. So we'll fill out the head first, pop out some to the shoulders and then fill out the rest of the shoulders here. We're gonna then let this piece fully cure overnight. And then we're gonna come back and saw off the excess foam so it's all nice, flat, and smooth. And then we can pop it upright and demold the whole thing, and we're done. That is it. A clay pour slash clay press is done.
And there you have it, guys, a clay pour slash clay casting of Robert Anglund ready to sculpt on. So, of course, the next step is going to be sculpting the open eyes, and that will be for a separate video. Some very special friends are going to be doing that for me, and I'm very thankful and very excited for that stage. And then we can get to the really, really fun stuff, and that is sculpting a bust of Frederick Charles Kruger. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Wherever you are in the world, have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly, and until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.